Welcome to Level Up, where you get the score on video games. I have to admit, I like Spyro the Dragon. Even though he's marketed towards younger kids, I still enjoy most of his games. So, today I'll be talking about one of my favorite Spyro games, Spyro 2, Ripto's Rage for the PlayStation. How about it, Sparks? You up for a vacation at the beach? The game starts with Spyro saying that he needs a vacation. From what? I have no idea. He goes through a portal, however, instead of reaching the sandy beaches of Dragon Shores, he ends up on the distant world of Avalar. There he meets Alora, a fawn, Hunter, a comic relief type cheetah, and the professor who built the portal to get Spyro there. He also meets Ripto, an evil sorcerer who was also accidentally transported there by the professor. Ripto has taken over most of Avalar, and the one thing that can stop him is a dragon for some reason. And although Spyro is small for his species, He's up to the task. A dragon? You brought a dragon to Avalar? I hate dragons! Yeah! The levels are well designed. It will normally have you have to follow the residents of the land around once, help them out so you can continue, and reward you with the talisman needed to eventually move on and finish the game. However, the levels are not linear. There is a path that you have to follow at first, but afterwards you'll see there is a lot more space to explore. There are 400 gems and a few orbs for you to collect in most levels, and although some are on that first path, most are. Since they both eventually become necessary, you'll want to find most of them. Though the gems are just found on the ground, most orbs aren't. Most of the time you'll have to talk to a citizen of the level and do a favor for him and he'll reward you with an orb. Crush! Go back and pack my bags! We're moving in! The levels are grouped and divided into areas called homeworlds. These also have orbs and gems to collect, but no talisman to find. They are also significantly bigger than most levels. These homeworlds make it so you can adventure around the levels available in any order, so long as you complete all of them so that you can move on to the next homeworld. At the end of each homeworld is a boss, otherwise there are none in the game. The bosses are a piece of cake and shouldn't be a problem for most gamers. You may have been able to defeat that simpleton, but Gulp will be more than a match for you. This is all fun, but I have to say the best thing about this game are the controls, which is important in a platformer, especially in 3D. In this game, Spyro has the ability to breathe fire, jump, glide, run, and ram stuff. Other skills come later on. The L and R buttons are used to adjust the camera, and this game works with the analog stick PlayStation controllers. I highly recommend using it, by the way, because the analog stick gives you better control while running. Running like that moves the pace of the game to a whole nother level, and you will want to use it most of the game. Yeah, how about 22475? <laughs> That's my birthday. If I had to say I have one problem with this, it's that the game is too easy. It's not necessarily a bad thing since this game seems made for kids, but it takes away from the replayability of this game. In a game like this, the replayability lies in finding all the orbs and the gems in each level and homeworld. But this game is often so easy, you can easily find everything on your first visit to a level if you just adventure around a bit. Exceptions for when you need a skill you can only use later in the game. Like I said, this isn't a bad thing, but when I beat and find everything so easily the first time, it doesn't make me want to play it again after I finish the game. Before you go, I think that Moneybags has something he wants to give you. Hmm, I most certainly do not. This game is great. It's a great 3D platformer game that makes you want to get everything right away, since you know you often can. The animation is also fun to watch, making up for the PlayStation's graphical limitation with cartoonishly exaggerated movements. The only downside is its lack of a challenge, so I feel I have to take away some of its score. I give Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage 8 out of 10 levels. I'm Leo Melanson, and now you know the score.